This video introduces creating numeric models in LeapFrog. We'll start by visualizing the numeric data, then create an initial numeric model, and finally make some simple edits to the model so that it more accurately represents the data. While for this video I will use a data set with acetone contamination data to build the numeric model, numeric models can also be built from any numeric data, including RQD data, USC data, etc. Start by dragging the numeric data into the scene to view it. If the table you're viewing has multiple columns of data, select the one you're interested in by using the drop-down list. The default color map assigned to the numeric data is a continuous color map set using the values of the input data. The color map can be edited, if you like, by clicking the color map drop-down and selecting the edit pencil. The existing color map can be edited by simply moving the nodes the changes made in this graph are instantly reflected in the scene. Click Generate Curve to modify the color map using different statistical options. New color maps can be created by clicking the drop-down and selecting New Color Map. For numeric data, you have the choice between a continuous or a discrete color map. We've just looked at the continuous color map options, so I'll select Discrete so we can see what that looks like. In the discrete color maps, you also have the option to generate intervals from several statistical options. Color maps that you don't need anymore can be deleted by simply expanding the color maps drop-down and clicking the delete icon. To model the acetone contamination we see here, I'll right-click on the Numeric Models folder and select New RBF Interpolant. There are a couple of options in the first window that need to be specified to create the first pass model. Firstly, I'll select the numeric values to be acetone. The surface filter can be used to filter out data which lies outside the boundary of the model or specified volume. We'll keep this on its default setting for now. For this particular dataset, compositing isn't necessary as the acetone measurement already spans the entire screen interval. But in certain datasets, like tightly spaced RQD measurements, creating composites may be necessary. For more information on compositing, please see the LeapFrog Works help. Next, I'll select a boundary. The boundary could either be a custom rectangle or it could be restricted to a specific model boundary or volume that already exists in the project. In this case, I'll choose to set the boundary by enclosing the screen data. I would change the surface resolution to 10 and click OK to process the numeric model. The processing time of the model depends on the speed of your computer as well as the resolution of the model. Once it's finished processing, I'll view the model in the scene. The default model created by LeapFrog is almost always incorrect. To make it represent the data more closely, we can make a few simple changes. The first thing I'll change is to restrict the model to the unit that contains the contaminant data, the gravel. To add a new model boundary, expand out the numeric model in the project tree so that you can see the boundary. Right-click on Boundary and select New Lateral Extent. From here, you can choose what type of data to use to bound your model. In this case, I'll select From Surfaced, which allows me to select any existing surface or volume in my project. I'll select the Gravel Output volume and click OK. You'll notice the model has automatically reprocessed to reflect this change. All other changes to the numeric model can be made by double-clicking on the new numeric model in the project tree. The main changes we're going to make for this model are in the Trend, Interpolant, and Output tabs. Starting in the Outputs tab, I'm going to change the default ISO values to my own ISO values of 300, 500, 700, and 900. Next, I'd like to see a bit more connectivity of the shells between boreholes. Two main parameters control this, the trend and the base range. We'll start by adding a trend. Given the geometry of this unit, I will add a flat plane and point the green arrow in the direction that I would like to see improved connectivity between the holes. Once the plane is set, click on the Trend tab and Set from Plane. Since I would like to see predominant continuity along the direction I set with the green line, which represents the direction of a maximum continuity, I'll leave the max at 3 and set the intermediate to 1 and click OK. Right now, we can see the influence of the measured values extend a significant distance into areas with no information. Perhaps this is entirely appropriate and can be left as is. Alternatively, 
We can restrict the range of this highest contaminant shell by changing the parameters in the Interpolant tab. Let's take a look at the effects that changing certain parameters in the Interpolants tab has on the model. Quickly compare changes made in the numeric model by copying your existing model a few times and testing out the changes on the copies. All the models can then be compared. In this first copy, I changed the interpolant from linear to spheroidal. You can see the range of the highest acetone contamination shell has been reduced, as the spheroidal interpolant affects the limits of influence of known values within a defined range. In this next copy, I changed the drift from constant to none. When using a spheroidal interpolant, the drift helps to inform interpolated values outside of the specified base range. When the drift is constant, interpolated values outside the specified base range approach the mean of the data set, whereas when a drift of none is used, those interpolated values outside the base range approach zero, resulting in a significantly more optimistic contaminant model. As you can see, Significant changes can be made to numeric models by simply manipulating their parameters. When starting out with numeric models, the best way to learn the tool is to copy a base model a few times and make incremental changes to each copy and then compare. Ultimately, you can adjust the parameters until the results are in line with your interpretations. As this is an introductory video, we're not going to get into any further detail for creating numeric models. However, if you would like further detail, please check out the online help or contact your local LeapFrog support office.